Namaskar, Rishika. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you to you. And I suddenly understand more and more what your teachings are about. <laughs> and, After giving and that, us so much trouble. <laughs> yes. And that you brought okay. me back to the ground. <laughs> And um, well, you yeah. fought very hard with me. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah, I I know now that it's better to just surrender to my truth, and um, yeah, <laughs> yes. and you gave me a lot of links to this, and for this, I just want to say thank you, and um, yeah, and my question is how to deal with this i mean you already gave me the answer um to surrender and to not listen to this voice of fear because it's the ego yes. um but sometimes i'm already pulled in and then i'm in reacting to the other and not in serving of my truth anymore and yeah i don't know how to be in this confidence to continuously act on my truth and not because of other people want something from me or yeah that's the question well sometimes when other people want something from you it's also what the truth wants so that's mm -hmm. nice when that happens mm -hmm. you see the more you actually live in the truth and you'll you'll experience this as you go along the more you live in that truth the less you are actually the less the world around you is resisting that truth that you are going with is a truth that wants the truth everywhere it's all one this truth it's not my truth versus your truth versus the other one's truth. It's all one. So when the truth is an action, actually nothing can stop it. You know what I'm saying? So the deeper you go into that truth, the less resistance will succeed. So if there is resistance from the other, this truth is so powerful that the other just cannot hold against it. The point is that, are you going into the truth or are you tuning into the ego? So, you need to be sure that where you're tuning in is the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. And, and, and you can hear, there is this difference between the truth and the ego. The ego is, is more loud, it's more demanding, it's more clamoring, it's trying to get its way, trying to push its way through. And the truth is more quiet, it's an impulse. It's not, it's not words, it's an impulse. So when this impulse comes and you go with it, that resistance won't have such a chance. It, it cannot hold against that truth. So when you experience resistance from the other, and you're not able to hold up against it, that means you're still not deeper in that truth, or not coming from that truth impulse. It's a, it's a dance, because the system is so used to functioning with the ego. Since you were born, that ego is slapped on, you know? You, you're, not, you're not sort of born with a little ego hanging from you. It is something that society slaps onto you, so that you can serve society. And the more complex a society is, the more ego there is. Because it's there to serve greed, it's there to serve a society trying to multiply its wealth, it's there for those things. So naturally, when you start to you know, listen to the truth and go inward, you are going to have resistance and you can measure how much you are with the truth based on how much resistance there is. And your ability to cut through that resistance. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have, you're sitting in your home, and let's say a friend of yours comes and knocks on the door, and you go in to find out, okay, uh, uh, should I let this person in or not? 
And the ego is saying, now open the door and pour her a cup of tea. And the truth is impulsing, no, no, no. If that truth is impulsing you really, you will have the means to resolve that situation without it causing you too much of trouble. You'll be able to say to her, I can't open the door right now. And you'll say it in such a way that she will get it. She may be a bit upset, but she won't be that upset that it's going to have repercussions. You can measure these things, you know, that is, that's the whole point, that the more you're in this Truth, the more you can measure it. And the more you can measure it, the deeper you go into the Truth, because you're able to see, oh, when I'm acting from the Truth, I don't have to be afraid. There is some resistance, but it's not enough to fight that Truth. The whole thing is like a war zone. This great Indian epic poem, the Mahabharat, it speaks about it speaks about life as war, you know, and how the one that goes with the Truth, that just actually goes with the Truth, fearlessly may have some losses, but wins in the end. To put it a bit simply, it's, it's a more complex story, but you know. So, it's a dance with, with the world, with life, with people, it's a dance. You have to dance that dance. You go with the Truth, you act from the Truth, you observe, then you ask yourself, is it really the Truth I'm acting from? Again you attempt. It's experiential, it's an experiment also. Spirituality or that transformational adventure is not something top-down, it is each one's subjective experience. And some people experience the Truth as a concrete material presence, others don't feel that material presence, but they know that there is a centre to themselves from which something is emerging that guides this system. So for you, you go in, you act from it, see how your environment is responding. If the response is too extreme, then perhaps you need to quiet down a little bit and see if it's really coming from ego or if it's coming from Truth. This is a dance, lifelong, because Self-Realization is not a... is not like a, a goal you can achieve, it is a deepening of Truth experience over a lifetime. Yes, there are those classical moments, the aha moment, when you realize that there is something like this center of the being, this soul, this master of the being, impulsing the whole system into action. The day you realize that is the big day. And after that, it's a process of deepening, of surrender, of deepening, deepening, surrender, surrender. Even after 10 years or 15 years of that process, sometimes suddenly the ego comes and it'll just take over and put you in such a dark state. And then again, you pull yourself out of it and you go back into the Truth. That is also what the Guru does. The Guru's role in, in the ancient systems of Guru Vada was to continuously throw the, the Shishya, the student, back to themselves. Go, the Soul, go there, go there, the Antar Guru, the Master, go in, 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 go to the Master, go, go. Not the Master outside, but the Master inside, because the Master outside points you to the Master inside. And you move in, 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 you surrender, you bend, you go further in, you dig, you go, you, you listen, you act, you see, is it coming from ego, is it coming from the Truth? Some people say, yes, but you know, that's such a difficult thing, I mean, who wants to do all that? Not everyone is meant for this. Those who are interested, who are intrigued, who are, who are fascinated by that process, they just keep on at it, in spite of all suffering and in spite of a lot of trouble. They have to give up a lot of other things in this life, but that's their trip, they want to get there, they want to know, they want to find out, they want to experiment, they want to... that's their trip. They don't want to go to the Moon, they want to go to the, the Sun. And that's where you keep on focusing, go, go. 
That's why you got, you got angry with me, because I pushed you to that point. And I did that without being afraid, you know, because it's very frightening, somebody like you, when you're sitting there and angry with me. I hope you're not going to be angry again, maybe in a few years again. Yesterday, two of my senior students were furious with me. Then after one hour, they calmed down. Um, yeah, can, can I say something again? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for this. And I've been in a very crazy roller coaster in, since I left India, I would say. And um, it really helped me to remind the teachings and the moments when when you said this um, just bend down and then yeah and then I I, I bent down and uh, but it's uh, it's it's a lot <laughs> what's coming up then yes <laughs> you are a seeker you know that's why you're going on this path and and I mean path it's not a path it's actually a moment to moment thing there are people who are not interested in this they're not fascinated with it and there are others who just want to find they want to reach that truth. They want to live from it. They want to see what happens. It's an experiment. It's it's that experience that they want, that they want to experience more and a little bit more, a little bit deeper, a little bit. Oh, that's the ego. Oh, that's the truth. Oh, let me see what happens. You know, it's like a this idea that spirituality is like you sit there and you know, you're in these states of Samadhi and all. No, that's the spirituality of the past. The spirituality of the future is present here and now, tuning into the Truth, refusing the demand of the ego and going with the command of the Truth. And that's not for the faint-hearted and for the meek. It's for the toughies. But it becomes as each generation now will move into a future where spirituality is not about enlightenment in the classical sense, but about Self-realization, with each generation it will become easier and easier for the populations to, to move further and further into the Truth experience and living from that Truth. I mean, greed is not going to dominate humankind for the next 10,000 years. This is a phenomenon of the conceptual of the rise of the conceptual, of the appearance of the conceptual on Earth, and that is going to be replaced by the transformative on Earth. First there was the entire mineral world, the materiality, and it was followed by the plant and animal world with the, with the emotionality, and then came the humans with their conceptual approaches. One of the, the, the phenomenon of the appearance of the conceptual on the planet is greed, for example, which l leads to the, 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 even to enlightenment processes, wanting to know about what's out there and reaching out into the unknown and trying to figure that out rather than to be here and now with what is already here. And that is what the next appearance of the transformative perception, transformative consciousness, let's say, which is already taking root in the world, is going to bring. So it's not as if everything's going to remain like this. Even the spiritual trajectory is a trajectory. It's not steady for 10,000 years, it's not going to be like that. Something what came up that um, kind of this time of Kali Yoga is um, just starting somehow, no? Because there was this misunderstanding that people thought it's over now, but now it it somehow starts that it yeah it that the pull to find the truth becomes more more strong in the soul of everyone. It appears to be that it's the beginning of the Satya Yuga, the, the age or era of Truth. Because the direct 
straightforward route to the truth is what is being realized and it's not just being realized in one place there are lots and lots and increasing numbers of teachers around the world and 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 experiences around the world of the truth teachers speaking about it people experiencing it as a solid material presence and not any more the idea of the truth being somewhere out there that one has to to look for and 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 spend hours of meditation to find and chant for uh, hours and push the consciousness out of the system into cosmic experiences in order to find the truth no the truth is terrestrial material present here now and that's the spirituality of the future and that is why it is the satya yug satya yug truth age the age of truth yeah thank you namaskar <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> i hope you're going to behave yourself when you come next time Yes. <laughs> I learned a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that. You know, I wouldn't have been so tough with you if I didn't know that you can handle it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for breaking my ego. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'll take the next question. <laughs>